Thursday, August the 9th, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Topping the news at this hour, Barbados has been dealt a massive blow to its investment reputation. This revelation from Attorney General Dale Marshall in response to the money laundering charges laid against former Cabinet Minister Donville Innes in the United States. Noting that Innes was the face of Barbados' global investment opportunities as Minister of International Business, Marshall told a news conference this evening that the charges had now cast a pall over the country and its foreign investment. He said that since the former minister's arrest and charges, investors have already started questioning whether the country was meeting its global standards. Barbados has now taken a sufficiently large hit that they have to consider whether to move their business ventures to somewhere else. Uh, it is a perception that, in a sense, will have been almost created or almost confirmed overnight but one which will take us many, many years to cure. This is not about anybody else doing Barbados's policing for us. It does make it quite clear to all and sundry that issues of corruption are cross-border issues and individuals who believe that they can engage in corrupt activity in Barbados must not feel, must not feel that it is concentrated only in Barbados. Uh, money moves and it demonstrates quite clearly that international agencies have oversight of things that we may consider to be local but which in fact have, um, have a reach far broader, far broader than our shores. Meanwhile, Charles Herbert has resigned as chairman of Goddard Enterprises Limited. In a brief statement today, the company said Herbert voluntarily stepped down as chairman of the board of directors of GEL with effect from August 7th this year. The company announced that William Putnam has been appointed as the new chairman. The development comes two weeks after Herbert appeared in court charged with two other Goddard Enterprises Limited employees with possession with intent to supply, trafficking and importation of 267 pounds of cannabis with an estimated street value of over a half million dollars on July the 23rd. The drug charges against Herbert and his colleagues, non-executive director Chris Rogers and the sailor Walter O'Neill Prescott, stemmed from a drug bust aboard the Ecstasy, that's a private yacht owned by Goddard Enterprises. However, so far, only Herbert and Rogers have made bail. Goddard Enterprises today assured its stakeholders and the general public of its continuing adherence to the highest standards of corporate governance and probity in its business and operations. There's still no resolution to the impasse between First Citizens Bank and its employees. Workers remained off the job for the second straight day. They are peeved at the bank's failure to honor profit-sharing wage agreements. Throughout the day, the Barbers Workers Union has been meeting with management. At news time, those discussions were till still continuing. Changes could be coming to the qualification requirements for supervisors in the Barbados Fire Service. Word of this from Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard as he addressed a recognition ceremony for 40 fire officials who participated in a two-week supervisory management skills and training course conducted by the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Maynard believed the service must be on the cutting edge and he says he will be meeting with the appropriate ministries to review the selection process. This activity this morning is witness to a success along the continuum of growth and development. We recognize that there were some gaps, skill gaps, knowledge gaps, and performance gaps. These gaps could not have been filled by wishing them away, by paying a blind eye to them, or by the lapse of time. Time does not heal everything. Therefore, action had to be taken. We will continue to ensure your development. We will continue to care and care to your professional success in this noble career. Maynard challenged the officers to become change agents to improve the operations of the fire service. I therefore encourage you not to fight the existing reality, but use your energy, your skills, and newfound motivation 
to create new models. New models that will change the way of thinking. New models that will change the way we operate. New models that will transform the Barbados Fire Service and the fire and rescue industry within the Caribbean region forever. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Kelvin Charles, is not at all happy with Caribbean Airlines. He is calling on the airline to improve its operations to Tobago during this peak season, as flights for the next couple of weeks are already fully booked. He says the airline must be aware of the passenger traffic during this period and therefore must do better. Elizabeth Williams of TV6 News has more. Speaking at the THA's weekly media briefing, Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles said Caribbean Airlines needs to have better problem-solving skills. The opposition said yesterday flights to and from Tobago for the next three weeks are completely booked. The Chief Secretary has written to the Lying Minister on the issue, requesting that the airline lease an additional aircraft. Mr. Charles also responded to concerns by the Tobago forwards about the airline's $50 change fee. I would have since recently raised the matter with the Lying Minister um, so that he could give a directive to Carl um, not to remove the $50 per se, but to implement a reward system. Because as it is, if you were to call, happen to call in, to cancel a booking, you still have to pay. It just does not make sense. I have said that to Caribbean Airlines, they had committed to give serious consideration to it. And on the international front, a Saudi-led coalition airstrike today killed dozens of people, including children, traveling on a bus through a market in Yemen's Sada province. More in this report from Reuters Television. Most were children, its head said in a Twitter post. The attack hit a crowded market in the town of Dahyan in Sa'ada province, the Iran-aligned Houthi movement's main stronghold. The strike happened in the middle of the market and it targeted a bus carrying children. Our shops were open and shoppers were walking around as usual. Those who died were residents, children and shop owners. The Western-backed alliance fighting the Houthis said its target was missile launches used to attack a southern Saudi city on Wednesday, killing one. And it accused the Houthis of using children as human shields. Coalition airstrikes have killed hundreds of civilians at hospitals, schools and markets since Riyadh and its allies intervened in Yemen's civil war in 2015. More than 10,000 people have been killed altogether. Western powers provide arms and intelligence to the alliance, drawing criticism from rights groups. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Mina in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.